all praises to our glorious Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Brakatha Yahweh, Brakatha Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Raka Kodash. Give double honors to our apostles of Great Millstone and to our sincere brothers on the highways and byways teaching his truth and to our sincere brothers and sisters supporting and learning this ministry Shalom Yahweh Ba'asham Yahashai is coming soon All praises to Yahweh Ba'asham Yahashai That's why we have to give our spiritual fathers of Great Millstone double honors right because if it wasn't for without them if it wasn't for them right we wouldn't know the scriptures right there's so many things that we've learned through our spiritual fathers that had been specifically spiritually set up right to understand the scriptures to break down the scriptures to pass it on to us right to the prophets okay and you have these people thinking they know the scriptures and they don't know nothing okay that's why I say again we have to give double honors to our apostles of great millstone right I never forget that right do not start to, to, to learn from them and then all of a sudden you become high and mighty and think you know more than them right so we must respect and 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 honor right and give double honors to our apostles okay and this is one of the reasons why because they broke down the trinity for us right they broke down many of the one scriptures for us right but i'm bringing up this video about people like this man here right thinking that he knows all right breaking down the scriptures people ringing him up to ask him how to break down scriptures and he knows fuck all okay i recently received a question about the trinity and i want to go ahead and play it for you now shalom alex uh um people from unlearned i have a question regarding um the trinity um uh, now uh, in, in christianity it's believed the trinity is a father the, the son the holy spirit and three in one uh, but my study of scripture leads me to believe that uh, um, there is one that's the father and he came in flesh as uh, a Yeshua and also the, the Ruach HaKodesh or oh, his Holy Spirit is his spirit. So it's just one God, but in, um, let's say, three different roles. So what is your take on the Trinity um, or the three persons of, of the Godhead. Uh, You're asking uh, the wrong person. Or they call it these days. Uh, thank you. Shalom. Great question, Ike. Thanks for sending in the video. So, is the Trinity biblical? Is God a Trinity? That has to be one of the most difficult questions I have ever tried to answer. For you. Difficult for you. But it wasn't difficult for the apostles, though, that taught us, for us to understand. As simple as I am right now, right? You don't have to be educated to know once the Holy Spirit is in you to understand, right? Once the Most High puts that spirit in you to understand, you'll understand. But people like you do not understand. That's why you find it confusing. Yes, sir. And I want to apologize to you, Ike, for taking so long to respond to this one. The Trinity has been a topic of debate for nearly 2,000 years. And I have to admit that I have been more than a little intimidated by this subject. Because I have been wrestling with it for quite some time myself. It's not for you. So please bear with me on this one as I try to do my best to explain my conclusions about it. Well, private interpretation. The word Trinity does not appear anywhere in the Bible. But it's a word that was invented to explain the relationship between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It refers to one being and three persons. You also mentioned a belief that is known as modalism. Modalism is the belief that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit represent three modes or aspects of God not three distinct persons. Basically, God takes different forms at different times. Both of these theories are trying to explain the unique nature of the relationship between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And both are considered to be monotheistic. 
However, I'm afraid that both are attempts to describe something that we don't really understand. We're trying to quantify and measure the immeasurable. Stick to yourself what you we don't understand. You don't understand, right? Because it wasn't the, the, the knowledge wasn't given unto you. Okay? By claiming to understand the nature of God, are we putting him in a box and making a God? You don't of know the no nature of no God. The Bible even tells us that it's a great mystery. And without controversy, great is the mystery of holiness. Elohim was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. We need to be careful about not going beyond what the Bible tells us because we don't want to invent theories or spread lies. But that's what you're doing, right? Because you don't know nothing. And you coming up on YouTube like you're some big teacher, right? Thinking you know about the scriptures, right? And you say you don't know. That's a lie within itself. Because our apostles know the breakdowns and the apostles taught us this true doctrine. You don't know about no doctrine, no true doctrine, right? Everything is of your self-interpretation, right? The Bible tells us that Yahweh is one. Likewise, Yeshua said, I and my Father are one. The language that's... Let me get a scripture for that, right? What these Christians like to talk about, the Trinity. In 1 John, they like to bring up this one, right? 1 John 5, verse 7 to 8. Okay? For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one, right? They love to say that, you know, in one. Okay? Verse 8, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. So what it is, right? There are three separate. They are separate, okay? Right? But they all are, they all agree, right? They are all in agreement, right? The same way how us brothers go to, to camp, right and we follow and we come into the truth right and we follow the one doctrine the one true doctrine right but there's many bodies in the camp isn't it but what it is we become one body right because we are all in agreement right we all agree that there's there shouldn't should, should be homosexuality we all agree that um um that, that we shouldn't eat pork right we, we we all agree that we should follow the high holy days we all agree that we should follow um the the, the laws all the law statutes of karma commandments to our best of our ability right we are all in one agreement right one okay one body but we are all separate separate bodies if you understand what i'm saying all right used in the bible seems to indicate a plural unity for example the shema says Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad. Yahweh our God, Yahweh is one. The word Echad is translated one, but it can also indicate a unity. For example, the same word is used for husband and wife becoming one flesh. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one, Echad, flesh. Likewise, the word Elohim is a plural word, but it's used to speak of one God when referring to Yahweh. So it seems that Yahweh Elohim is a plural singular. But what does that even mean? I have spent years trying to understand the Trinity. I studied it in college. I've read several different oh, books college? on the subject. What, you studied in college? Right. If you study in college, right, how come you can't read... Let me give another scripture now to prove, right, but this Trinity is rubbish, made up, okay? So how come you can't come across um, Psalms um, 110 verse 1, okay? And it says... Psalms 110.1 The Lord, right? Okay, you hear that? The Lord, and that's in all caps, right? Capital L, capital O, capital R, and D. Said to unto my Lord, yes, okay? You see that now? And that is common now, right? Capital L, common, common um, O, common R, common D, okay? So I'm going to start again. Um, Psalms 1 10 and 1 the Lord which is at Yahweh said unto my Lord Yahweh Shai sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool see 
So it's a separate layer. You see, it's separate, right? It's separate layer. Okay, that's one down. And I've searched the scriptures for answers. And I am convinced that the relationship between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is a mystery that we may never fully understand. And I'm not... It's not a mystery, okay? It's not a mystery because our apostles have taught us, right, the true breakdown, right, of the Trinity, of, of any kind of breakdown you want to talk about, right? Our apostles, which are set up by Yahweh Basham Yahushai, right, to teach us this, this truth, right? So it's your, you don't know the mystery. You're lost. I'm not sure that we're even meant to. We are finite mortals who are trying we're to describe meant to. an we're infinite, about. immortal God. And anyone who thinks they have it figured out is fooling themselves. People have been arguing about the nature of the Godhead for nearly 2,000 years. And all it has accomplished is strife and division. One person calls another one a heretic if they disagree about this topic. Churches have been split over the subject and whole denominations have been formed as a result. I suggest, instead of arguing about the Trinity, we need to spend our time and energy seeking Him, listening to Him, and obeying Him. When Moses asked who Yahweh was, he simply responded by saying, I am. And Elohim said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. How can the creation even try to understand the nature of the Creator? It's beyond our comprehension. Right, you're going to a different, you're going, you're going off now. When I say going off, is I cannot answer the man's question. There's so many scriptures in here, right, that could break down how we could default how about this Trinity. I've got another one now, Matthew 3 and, um, and verse 17. And lo, a voice from heaven, okay, Right? This is when Yahweh was baptized by John the Baptist in the in the in the Jordan. Okay? And it says in verse 17, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Okay? So if 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 if, if it's all one, so how could Yahweh look up upon himself and goes, Oh, I am pleased about myself? It's not that, right? Yahweh was being baptized, okay, and our power looked down, right, and looked down at his son and goes, I am pleased with you, right? Go on, my son, go on, my son, I am pleased with you, all right? All right? So that's another cut again. And any attempt to define or measure God is utterly futile. So to answer your question, is God a trinity? I don't know. But I believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I believe these three are one. We are not expected to understand how God is. We are simply expected to believe that He is. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to Elohim must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. I hope you found this video helpful. And I hope it encourages you to believe even when you don't fully understand. Listen, right? I give another one, right? The Most High deals with order, okay? He deals with order, okay? You have Yahweh. I'm just paraphrasing. You have Yahweh. Then you have His Son, right? Then you have the men and you have the children, right? You see, that is all separate. You see, that's not all in one. You see, I'm just paraphrasing here, okay? Right? So that's so by you saying that the Trinity, you're canceling out, you're canceling out, um. First Corinthians eleven and third uh, eleven and three, okay, where where, where everything is done in order, okay, okay. For example, um, in Psalms one fifty, right? Let me get that in Psalms one fifty. Psalms one fifty, and there's a reason why that, right? We have to exalt, right? He says, "Praise thee, the Lord." Right? You see, all in caps again. Praise Yahweh in his 